The products that I'm reviewing in this video, the Skyzone Cobra S and Cobra X goggles were sent to me by Skyzone. I did not purchase them in retail. I did not receive any uh, monetary compensation in exchange for this video. And Skyzone has not had any editorial input into the contents of this video before it was released. Folks, I love it when a manufacturer makes it easy for me to review their product. My goal whenever I review a product is to help you make a decision of whether this is the right product for you to get or whether you should get something else. But in this case, there kind of isn't anything else that does what these do at the price point that they do them at. And no, it's not a cheap price point. Skyzone has differentiated this product by making it the most expensive box goggle I've ever seen. But it might also be the best. And that's the question we're going to tackle in this video. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Usually when people buy box goggles, it means that they're just getting into FPV and they're trying to spend the least amount of money possible. And along with that low price point, also box goggles usually have pretty poor RF performance but they're cheap, so people buy them anyway. Skyzone has done something really different here. These goggles are super expensive. How expensive are they? The Cobra X costs $219 and has a 1280 by 720 screen. The Cobra S costs $169 and has an 800 by 480 screen. They also have not cheaped out on the receiver module. So these goggles have the same rapid mix receiver module that's in the Skyzone Sky 04 and in the Eoshin EV03, both of which, by the way, are made by Skyzone, even though the Eoshin doesn't have Skyzone's name on it. And that rapid mix module has similar technology to what makes the TBS Fusion and the Immersion RC Rapid Fire so freaking good. The ability to reconstruct sync pulses and combine frames rather than just doing diversity switching between the antennas Antennas. Basically, this technology means that these goggles have really, really good range. So, does that mean that you no longer have to decide between wearing a box goggle and getting good range, that you can get both of those things? I've got a range test for these coming up later in the video, and you're going to see for yourself. I actually, I'm not just teasing you. I shot the video. I haven't actually edited it and looked at the results, so I also don't know. But I have tested the Eoshin EV300O and the Skyzone Sky 04X, and I was very, very impressed with the results of the range test. I found that those were really almost on par with the Immersion RC Rapid Fire and the TBS Fusion, which is saying a lot, considering that n almost nobody has made a module that good at all, never mind one that's put into a set of box goggles. Uh, unfortunately, it's going to be really difficult for me to show you guys on camera what the screen looks like looking in the goggles. With these Fat Shark style goggles, you can put a GoPro into the eyepiece and it more or less approximates what you see with your eye. But this is a big wide viewing area that's intended for your whole face to go into. And it's just very, very difficult to get a camera to emulate that. And one of the things that you're gonna notice as I'm moving this around is that there is a lens here in front of the screen. And there's a little more to it even than that because what you're seeing is not actually the screen itself. There is a 45 degree mirror and the screen is actually on top facing down. And what that does is that moves the screen further back from your eyes. Uh, when the screen is too close to your eyes, your eyes have to focus very close and that causes eye strain. The combination of this lens here and the mirror balancing the signal uh, means that the screen is further away and you can look at the screen for a longer time with less eye strain. Certainly a question many people are gonna ask is how does this work if you have glasses? Um, this lens piece in theory, it could pop out and be replaced. You could just get a little screwdriver or a plastic pry and pop it up there. Um, what I do is I just put my glasses inside and it works just fine. I can see just fine. The battery on the goggle just died, which gives me a perfect opportunity to talk about how they're powered. Uh, they can be powered from a single 18650 cell, which is in a case here. It is not included. You will need to source that on your own if you want to use that. Uh, they do have internal charging via USB, so that's no problem. You can plug USB in here. It is a USB-C and they can be powered from USB. So if you have a USB power bank that you prefer to use, that would be fine as well. And you have a DC input here. 
that can be used with a standard um, like Fat Shark goggle or, or something like that. And it also comes with, I don't have it handy, but it comes with an XT60 to barrel connector that'll let you use it with your flight packs if you prefer. As long as we're looking at the bottom of the goggles, we can also see the head tracker output. The goggles do have built-in head tracker. Uh, if you want to use that for a camera gimbal, you can. Uh, it's got an HDMI input, so you can use it with something like a shark bite. I haven't personally verified that, but uh, as long as it takes the 720p HDMI output from the shark bite, it should work. Uh, it's got an AV uh, input slash output uh, for use with an analog ground station and the SD card for the DVR is here. On top of the goggle is the menu button, the power button, and the DVR start stop record button, as well as two roller wheels and they are clicky roller wheels and that's how you access the main menus. Well, I can't show you what the image looks like to have your face in there, but I would like to show you the menus and stuff. So I'm gonna pop this out. Uh, probably shouldn't be doing that with a metal screwdriver, but okay. Uh, I'm gonna pop this out and I'm gonna put a GoPro in here so you can at least see the menus and so forth. Well, that's not actually that bad. That's kind of, yeah, that's not bad. You get kind of a sense of what it's like to have your face in there. Now, the first thing you're gonna notice as we look at this is that the screen is somewhat sensitive to the alignment of your face. So you can see that if I move the camera up a little bit that you start to see the bottom of the screen off the bottom of the mirror and you kind of get a double image. You're definitely gonna want these on your face exactly right. They're fairly tolerant to left-right alignment. So if you've tried other goggles and you have problems with your eyes being too wide or too narrow set, or if the screen is just a little too far from your face and it doesn't right line up right, like most box goggles, these are gonna be very tolerant of different size faces and stuff. But because of the mirror, that vertical alignment, if you go too low, you can actually see the screen. And if you go too high, you can start to see double image off the bottom of the mirror. I didn't find this to be a problem while I was using the goggles. And you just set them in the right place and then kind of get lost while you're flying. The goggles have a really good user interface. Actually, SkyZone revamped this for the Sky04. Uh, and their old interface was good, but this one is way more intuitive and easy to use. On the right side, if I long press the jog wheel and then click it again, we'll go into auto scan and it'll do a spectrum scan and find all the channels with transmitters on them. And now if you'll excuse me, I have to squint into the screen while I hold the GoPro, but that menu lets you adjust settings for head tracking. You can adjust the image settings including brightness, contrast, saturation, and so forth. You can adjust settings for the DVR. Cyclic recording, which causes it to, if it fills the SD card, it just keeps recording over the first ones. Auto recording, which auto starts recording when you, uh, when you power up. Uh, you can also start recording and stop recording by pressing the DVR button here. Video length, it'll automatically break up the videos, whether it should record audio or not. I personally turn that off because it's always just static because I don't have audio on any of my quads and you can format the SD card, of course. Display settings let you change uh, things like the OSD timeout, the OSD position, and also the aspect ratio. On the on the X goggles, they can change from 16.9 to 4.3. The screen is 16.9 uh, native. The S goggles are 4.3 only. And finally, there are system options here, such as uh, calibration of the input voltage uh, and so on. The right side jog wheel lets you select the input and RF mode. Uh, so for example, if you wanted to switch the AV input or the HDMI input, that's how you do it. As far as fit goes, the goggles come with Velcro, sticky Velcro that you apply, and then these pads here that go across the top and the bottom. In addition, SkyZone has given these pieces, which help block light from leaking in uh, at the edges and here at the nose. Uh, if you wear glasses, I find for my face shape that the light leak is pretty good around the top and the sides, but there's a fair amount of light leak uh, around the bottom. It feels like these have been designed with a flatter profile um, and some people have flatter faces and some people have kind of narrower faces. If you've been happy with goggles in the past that had the flatter profile, these will probably fit pretty well. I don't find them to be uncomfortable against the nose or anything like, of course they, they, they come with a head strap, but I've left it off so you could easily see into the screen. Um, I find them to be pretty comfortable on my nose and so forth. I find them to line up pretty well with my face and my eyes, but there is a little bit of light leak at the bottom. I don't find that to be too distracting, but some people, some people would object to it. 
So what we've got here is a goggle with decent image quality. It's not an OLED screen. Okay. Decent image resolution. At least the higher uh, the higher priced one is decent image resolution. The lower priced one is 480 is adequate for standard definition. That's like the minimum, but it's okay. Um, great features, e great interface. The only real question, great, great build quality. SkyZone really just has a consistent track record of making very good build quality goggles. These are new products, so we can't be sure, but I'm, I feel safe giving them the benefit of the doubt. The only big question is, how does the range hold up? And for that, we're gonna go out to my parking garage that I go to to do range tests. I use a parking garage because it has a lot of multi-path reflections and the big concrete walls absorb the signal a lot so I don't have to fly 27 miles out just to figure out how long you can go. So we're gonna go look at that. Um, you can judge for yourself how the range does and then we're gonna come back and we'll conclude. The first test I did was to compare the Cobra S and the Cobra X to each other, which might sound dumb because they have the same module in them, so shouldn't they perform the same? Yeah, they should. So let's see if they do. I am using matched antennas uh, that I've used a uh, antenna analyzer to make sure that they are performing about the same. So this should be a pretty fair test. And you can judge for yourself. Uh, obviously, they won't be identical, but you can judge for yourself if the approximate level of breakup is the same for both of them. Here we go again. We're going to go back in again. You're looking at the actual screen of the goggle being recorded with a GoPro. You're not looking at DVR because DVR doesn't always accurately reflect what you actually see in the screen. I'd also like to acknowledge I usually would not reveal which goggle was which until the end so that you could get a, a fair and unbiased comparison. But since the screens are different aspect ratio, it should be pretty obvious which is which. Uh, so I've labeled them for this test. Well, okay, now the real test. The TBS Fusion and the Immersion RC Rapid Fire, in my opinion, are basically tied for the lead of best analog receiver module. So let's see how the Cobra X compares against the TBS Fusion. We're also using the HDO3 with OLED screens, and you can really see the difference, even though the GoPro does not perfectly capture exactly what your eye would see, because it's just a camera. You can clearly, these, these cameras have identical exposure settings. You can just see how much nicer the high resolution and um, just the performance of the OLED screen is. Nevertheless, the Cobra X doesn't look as bad in real life as it's kind of being made to look here. There's a little more light leaking in because the Cobra X has a wide, the box goggle has a wider uh, opening. So it's a little washed out, but hmm, there you go. Um, as we come back, oh, Holy cow. There we go. It recovered. Wow. We got to talk about that. You're about to see the Cobra have a sideways scrolling image. And this is a problem with the sync reconstruction technology. Every single sync reconstruction receiver that has been released to market so far, except for Clearview, I think, has struggled with this. The very first release has this problem. Then eventually they fix it in firmware updates. Rapid Fire had it. Fusion, I'm pretty sure, had it, and now SkyZone is having it. They've been having it with the SkyZone Sky04 goggles, and they have released firmware updates to try to address it. I assume that it will be addressed at some point in the future, but yikes, if you buy this today, you're going to want to be really aware that this is a possibility because that kind of thing happening while you're flying can, oh, well, it's still happening. It's still happening. Yeah, I need a firmware update here. So that brings us to the end of the video. And as always, the question, should you buy it? And I think for a lot of people, the answer to that question is gonna be super easy. If you're looking for a absolute bottom barrel budget box goggle, this is not it. You want the Eosheen EV800D, which is about a hundred bucks. If you want the absolute top of the line, then you're probably gonna be looking at the SkyZone Sky04X, the Eosheen EV300O, et cetera. And I've got a video I made rounding up those goggles. And if you want it, it's linked in the video description if you think that's the direction you wanna go. But if you want a box goggle for a specific reason, like you just don't like the tiny screens on the other side of the goggle, or you're, they don't fit your eyes, or if you want the absolute best image quality and video range that you can get for the least price. I think these are going to be pretty freaking compelling. What could we compare them to? 
The only other two box goggles that I think really compare to these are the Fat Shark Scout, which is $229, so the same price as the X, the Cobra X. It has an 1136 by 640 resolution screen. So a lower resolution screen, the Cobra X is 1280 by 720. Has the same uh, field of view. It has a pretty good DVR and it has decent antennas. It has a built-in patch antenna and an Omni antenna comes with it. By the way, the antennas that come with these guys are cheap little rubber ducky antennas. They're garbage. You absolutely should buy an upgraded one to make the most of this receiver. And that's gonna add maybe 20 bucks, maybe as much as 30 bucks. Um, you're probably gonna do that with almost any goggle you get. So I'm not gonna ding them too hard for that, but it definitely should be mentioned. The other goggle that has to be mentioned is the FXT Viper V2. And the Viper V2 costs about $170 and has the same 800 by 480 resolution as the Cobra S. Um, has similar field of view and similar features, but I feel very comfortable saying that I would take the Cobra S over the FXT Viper V2 because the Cobra S has a much, much better receiver built into it. The FXT Viper isn't terrible, but it's not great either. I think Skyzone has a winner here. They have identified a market segment and then created a product to fill that segment that there's almost nothing else out there. And the only other thing that is kind of out there at that same price point doesn't have as good a features. If you're looking for an FPV goggle in the price range of about $170 to $230, and if you want the best box goggle you can possibly get today, I think the SkyZone Cobra is the one to get. Yeah, so that feels so weird. Normally I'm all like, well, if this, if that, then this, then that, and I just don't get to say, this is the one. Also, who out there is looking for a $220 box goggle? I mean, I guess you must be out there. I mean, I guess it's a really good image for $220. You're not gonna get a picture like this on a, a fat shark goggle for $300, $400. That's a fair amount of money. You know who you are. And if you are you, then you should go down to the video description and click the affiliate links there when you go to buy these goggles or anything because affiliate links are not tied to a specific product. When you click the link, anything you buy at the store, I get a small commission off of. So just go click that link, do your shopping. It's an easy way for you to support the channel and it sure does mean a lot. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hope it has helped you make your decision. Happy flying. Do you see this baby? Isn't he cute? Hit the subscribe button. Join my Patreon. Use my affiliate links. Or just keep watching videos. That's better than nothing. Google Gaga, subscribe to my daddy.